Okay, so this is gonna be the worst video ever, <laughs> and I have made some bad videos. I currently have my phone taped to the top of a box. I'm also trying to support it with my left hand. I'm gonna write with my right hand, and we're gonna do the best we can because that's what we do in mathematics land. And it's gonna fall into the better than nothing category, assuming I can even figure out how to get it posted, and you get shadows, probably barking. Who knows? Okie doke. So I need to figure out what I need to figure out. I know that this is 100. I know that angle A is 30. And I know that, okay, this is going to be side B because it's across from angle B, C across from C, A across from A. So I know that side B is 2. So at first I feel like I don't have the information that I need to use the law of signs because I don't have a pair. But I can find B pretty easily through subtraction. So if I take um, 180 and then I subtract the 30. Why am I doing this on my calculator? OMG. Okay. Wow. I got 50. Shocker. So anyway, that is the third angle. And more importantly, it gives me the information that I need to use the law of signs because now I have a pair. I feel like you can't possibly see what I'm doing, but I'm hoping. So it doesn't matter whether I find side A or B first, or excuse me, A or C but I have to use the sine of 50 over two because that's what I know. And then I'll just find A first. In order to find A, I need to use angle A, which is 30, and that'll help me find side A. So on my calculator, I'm gonna do my cross multiplying. Two times the sine of 30. I'm gonna close my little parenthesis and divide by the sine of 50. I don't have to do, um, inverse because I'm looking for a side and even though 1.31 seems really short the other side was only two and keep in mind you guys since 50 is bigger than 30 in terms of a degree I would expect this a value to be smaller because it's with a smaller angle so 1.3 is a super reasonable answer and I'm going to repeat the exact same math um, but in order to find ang excuse me side c I'm going to use angle c and now keep in mind that this is 100 degrees, which is bigger than 50, so I expect side C to be bigger than two. It won't necessarily be double, that's not how that works. So I'm gonna go ahead and do two times the sine of 100, shut her down, divide by the sine of 50, 2.57. I'm happy with that because it is bigger than what I had and my angle was bigger than what I had as well. Now to find the area, you can kind of use whatever you want, um, if you're going to use the one half side side formula thing, keep in mind that the two sides that you use have to be around an angle that they form. So let's pretend I was going to use this angle. I'd have to use this side and this side. If I was going to use the 100, then I'd have to use this side and this side. It's whatever two sides form that angle. So let's go with 30. And so I'm gonna to need to use side B, which is two, side C, which is 2.57, and then I'd have to use the sine of angle, the angle that's in between them, which is 30. And then it's just a straight up calculator thing. So 0.5 times two times 2.57 times the sine of 30, and I got 1.285. I have no idea if that's what I had before, because I think before I did the 100 degree. Hopefully that's true. Okay, um, let's roll. Uh, what do I know? This is C cross from C, A, B. What do I know? I know angle C is 120. I know side B is 10 and side A is 18. Okay, I do not have a pair and I can't find any other angles. So I have to use law of cosines. And the thing that I'm gonna find first is this because it's easier to find sides than angles. So I start with C squared and now I'm using the other two angles that I know in my law of cosines. And since I started with C, I have to end with the cosine of angle C, which is 120. This one is finding a side, so I can just type this whole entire thing into my calculator. Got 
then 604 seems really big, but keep in mind that is C squared. So I'm gonna do the square root of that. I always just do it to the half power, which is the same thing, which you learned in math class, hopefully. So 24.58 is what I'm getting. Is that a reasonable answer? 24.58. Um, yeah, why? Because 120 has to be the biggest angle since it's obtuse. And so this has to be the biggest side, and it is. And now that I have a pair, I can transition over to the law of sines. Um, I will be finding angles, so it doesn't matter which. I'll go ahead and find B, but since I'm going to be finding an angle, I have to remember to use the inverse. So I set up the sine of the angle I know over the side across from it. And I let that equal the sine of the angle I'm looking for over the side across from that. So if I had been looking for sine A, I'd have to put the 18 on the bottom, but that's not what I'm looking for. So I'm going to take my 10 times my sine of 120, close it down, and divide by 24.58. Now I'm going to get a little decimal because I need to do the inverse sine of that answer. So second sine of that answer, and I'm using a lot of signs, so I have to use the inverse sine I get 20.63. So that was this one, 20.63 degrees. And then to get my third one, I can use subtraction. So I can take the 180 minus the 120 that I have minus the 20.63, and I'm gonna come up with 39.37 as that angle measure. Now I'm gonna move my arms around a lot because I'm gonna pull up my, assuming I can do this with one hand. You're welcome for this entertaining video. But the drum line came and it was so cool. If you weren't there, you totally missed it. That's like one of my favorite things in the world without exaggeration. My computer's not letting me in because it's just that kind of day. So you can just sit here some more. What I'm trying to do is look up my key so that what I'm doing kind of matches that in terms of the order and everything. But what it's really doing is just making this video even longer. You're welcome. What else have you got to do? Okay, we're almost there, kids. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so I'm just looking, I found angle A first, but it doesn't make a difference on the answer key if you were following along for the math. You're gonna notice that I found angle A first, showed my work for that, I got the exact same thing, and then I just subtracted to find B. So for the area here, I would definitely go for these three pieces of information because they were given to me, so I know they're right. So when I'm gonna go ahead and use that formula like this again, I'm gonna use two sides and then I have to use the sign of the angle they form, which is in this case, the 120. And that way I'm using only um, numbers that were given. So when I go ahead and type them in, I can be super confident about them because I didn't calculate them, they were given to me. And so I am coming up with an area of 77.94. Okay, let's, Take a look at this last one. Okay, the last one, I know only sides. So boo, hiss, across from C, across from A, across from B. So B is 12, A is 40, C is 44, and I know nothing. You do have to find the largest angle first. There's a thing called the ambiguous case, which means there's potentially more than one triangle, and it's very complicated, and we skipped it. You're welcome. So. I'm gonna find the largest one, and the way I know it's the largest is that this is the largest length. So I'm gonna find that, but I gotta use law of cosines because I don't have a pair of A's, B's, or C's. So this is when I have to do that little waltz. I'm gonna to have to put C out in front because I'm finding C, so one has to go at the beginning or the end of the little bookends. Then I'm gonna use my other sides in the formula. It makes no difference which one goes where, and then I'll have cosine C at the end, keeping in mind that you can't just type everything in. You can do this one, these two, 
and then these three, that's why I keep saying it's the walls. One, two, three, one, two, three. So 44 squared, I can do that, <clears throat> excuse me, that one number. Then I can do my next two numbers, which is 12 squared plus the 40 squared. Those are the other two sides, 1744. That's the year I was born. Then the next three numbers is gonna be two times 12 times 40. So 960, but that is attached to our unknown. So it's like having 960 X. So after I do my little one, two, three, I always subtract. Always, always, always. Sue, 1936 minus 1744. 192. Now, this is still negative because I didn't get rid of the negative. I just got rid of the 1744. So I'm gonna divide, which is always that next step. Wow, that's a really bad nine, but whatevs. I got negative point two. But that's my cosine. That's not actually my angle. So whenever you're looking for an angle, your last move is inverse cosine of that answer. So if I do inverse cosine of that answer, I end up with 101.54. Now you should never have to use the law of cosines more than once because now you've created a pair. So if I wanna find B or A, and it doesn't matter which one I do next, I can use law of sines. I'll go ahead and find B. All I have to do for that, let's see if I can rearrange, sorry. I'm gonna take the sine of the angle I know over its matching side, and then the sine of the angle I'm trying to find over its matching side. And I'm finding an angle, so I expect to do inverse in a little bit here. So 12 times the sine of 101.5, whatever that number is, four, shut her down, divide by 44, and then that is not my angle, so I do second sine or inverse sine of that number. And the angle's 15.498, so that would actually round up to 15.5. So angle B, I'm getting 15.5 degrees. It says to do two decimals, so I'll be fancy and write that zero in. And then to get A, I'm simply going to do some subtraction. I'm going to take my 180, take away what I already have in degrees, and I'm getting 62.96. Now, some of you were looking at the answer key and you're like, I have almost that. Well, almost is not really going to cut it because they really should be like within hundredths of the same. For area here, I'm going to practice using the other one because now the things that were given were the sides. So I know that's 100% correct. So I'll start by finding my semi-perimeter. I add up the sides, which is the perimeter. Hello, geometry and I cut it in half. So my semi-perimeter is 48. Then my area formula, which is at the top of the paper, using the three sides, is gonna look like this. And then I subtract the length of each side. So I'm sneaking a little peek up here to see what they are. Okay, so now I'm just putting that whole thing in here. It's kind of annoying and I usually do it wrong, but I believe in me. Alrighty, so I'm getting the wrong answer. Oh yeah, OMG. Okay, here's where this comes in handy. I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna change that to 44 and then I'm gonna get myself an answer. Beauty of the calculator. Okay, so then my final area is 235.15. Okay, so that's the front. I have no idea how long I can make this video before it just like cuts me off or won't transfer to my computer, but we're still hoping for the best, right? So you take these word problems very seriously and while I applaud your seriousness, you have to not be so concerned about what that triangle is gonna look like because looks aren't everything, kids. So Juan and Ramella are standing on the seashore. If you want to draw yourself a triangle, go for it. 
And then you just decide, here he is, here this person is, they are 10 miles apart, there we go. It doesn't matter what the triangle looks like and it doesn't matter which side's who. I just have to fill in the rest of the information. The coastline is a straight line between them. So apparently this is the coastline. Both can see the same ship. Okay, so here is ship. Uh, the angle between the coastline and the line between the ship and Juan is 35 degrees. The angle between the coastline and the line between the ship and Romella is 45 degrees. Okay, how far is the ship from Juan? So this is my unknown. Oh, and it doesn't have to be drawn that way. It just has to have the 35 degrees by Juan, the 45 by Romella, the 10 between them, and so on. Then I decide, what can I use? Law of sines, law of cosines. I know two angles, so I already know that I can do this one doing 180 minus 35 minus 45, and I can find out that that last angle is 100 degrees. Shocker. Why is that helpful? Well, because then I know an angle on the side across from it, and I can use the law of sines. I can set up sine 100 over 10 equals, and then since I'm trying to find that side over here, that length is what they asked for, I have to set it up using the angle across from it. And I'm not going to do inverse because I'm not looking for angles. That's 100. That's 45, which is smaller. So I'm expecting something smaller than 10. So 10. And knowing what to expect is super helpful because then you can be like, my answer don't make no sense. So I have that it is 7.18 and looking back, that is miles. Look at me go, I'm on the last problem ready. This is so easy, hopefully. Okay, so again, draw a triangle. Mine's not even straight, who cares? Length, blah, blah, blah. Okay, for funsies, I'll put the longest side over here, but it genuinely doesn't have to be drawn to scale. They didn't tell me who's where or what it is or anything, so I'm going to go with ABC. Now, you might call it something else. So it says, what are the measures of the angles between the sides to the nearest tenth of a degree? Okay, so I'm going to be looking for angle ABC, but you have to look and see if you get the same three answers. They won't necessarily be called ABC unless you totally copied my paper. So the first thing I always have to find is the biggest angle, which has to be across from the longest side. So I'm going to find angle A first. And since all I know is the three sides, I'm going to have to use law of cosines. So this is going to be finding an angle. So I have to do the whole one, two, three business. And I'm going to be looking for this angle, so I have to start with this out front. And then the others can go in for the other two sides in my formula. Doesn't matter which one goes where. And it doesn't matter if you call this P, Q, R, T, smiley face, or A. You're doing the math the same way. So now I can do the one, two, three thing. That is a giant number. Now I'm doing the next two numbers. One, two, three. So I'm do the next two numbers. That's a giant or number. That's not a word. Now I do my three numbers. And that one is attached to our unknown, AKA X. I always subtract an X, so since I always do it, I might as well do it. So, I have that, and then what's left over here is that. Attached to this by multiplication means you need to divide it out. I'm going to just pretend I wrote that number there because it doesn't fit. This will cancel. And I'm going to take my number I had and I'm going to divide it by the negative 380950. No! Hang on. I just decided to introduce a decimal that wasn't there. So negative 380950. That makes way more sense. And now I'm looking for an angle 
and I'm using a lot of so cosines, so I'm gonna do the cosine inverse of that number. And what just happened? And I'm getting 85.12. What did I find? I found this angle. Okay, so that should be one of your angles. You don't have to have called it A. But now that I know in my picture that this is 85.12, I know a pair. So let's say I wanted to find B. Now I can use the law of sines because I know this angle's 85.12. It's side partners 595. I do not know um, angle B but I know that it's side B partner is 401. So I'm gonna go do my cross multiplying. 401 times the sine of 85.12. I'm gonna divide by 595, and I'm gonna get me this. But I need to do co excuse me, sine inverse of that because I'm now using the law of sines. So if I do inverse sign of that answer, it's kicking out 42.18. And I just found angle B. And for angle C, I can just use subtraction. And I can take 180 minus angle A and angle B. So let's do that. and I'm getting 52.7. So you should have these same three answers. It doesn't matter if you called them A, B, C. So all the processes that we just did, those are the processes you need to know. So I will see you tomorrow, and I'm sorry that this is not ideal, but sometimes life's not ideal, but the drumline came, so yay.